Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be continuing our coverage of the 2014 Chess Rapid World Championships. If you're not too familiar with the formats, kind of covering again, they play three days of rapid chess. That is 15 minutes per game or per opponent per game. And you also get 10 seconds per increment for each move that you make. So you can't get more than 15 minutes in the particular game. But very, very quick chess. They play five matches a day for three straight days to crown a champion. So a lot of chess from these players. They're getting to play a lot of different players that they usually don't get to play. And even if you're the number one player in the world, which we're going to be going over one of his games right now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are the best rapid or blitz player. And there's a lot of players that they can lay some traps. You can fall into some very easy mistakes that you just don't think about in the heat of the moment. So I thought it'd be good to go over a game from round three from Magnus Carlsen, the top player in the world right now just won the world championships against Vladimir Potkin a Russian grandmaster very very good chess player in his own right so Magnus Carlsen is going to be playing with the white pieces and we have Vladimir Potkin going to be playing as the black pieces Magnus Carlsen decides to start the game out with pawn to e4 Makes me all warm and fuzzy when I see that very aggressive opening line from Magnus Carlsen. I really enjoy watching Magnus Carlsen when he is playing very aggressive. Pawn to c5, the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, very common moves from both sides. After the exchange, we do see the Tamina variation, the pawn here to e6, and then knight here to c6. Knight to c3, queen c7, normal moves in the Tamina variation. Pawn to a6, very interesting. I, I grew up studying this line, and it was always bishop here to e2, castling on the king side. Uh, Magnus Carlsen goes for a different approach, and he actually plays pawn here to a3. Somewhat of a waiting move uh, does stop his opponent from playing knight here to b4, which is fine. So continues with knight to f6, pawn here to f4. So you can already see Magnus Carlsen has a very different line that he's thinking about. Uh, more of an aggressive on the king side, maybe castle on the queen side. He still could castle on the king side, have a you know rook behind here on f1, supporting this pawn, pushing forward. But but it does look like you know his opponent is going to be somewhat forced to castle on the king's side. He can kind of go all in on the king's side, focus on castling on the queen side. So this he's kind of taking the variation that that I'm familiar with and kind of flipped it on his head and kind of made it more of an aggressive line, which is something you may want to try to do, especially if it's a rapid game where your opponent may not be super familiar with it. Those are the types of small little incremental advantages that you can gain because Magnus Carlsen is familiar with pretty much every opening and variation, uh, much more so than I would imagine of Vladimir Potkin. We now see the knight exchange, uh, so queen here to d4. Could have taken with um, other pieces, but this does give him an aggressive queen and allows him to castle on the queen side that much faster. Uh, knight here to a g4. Interesting variation from here. Magnus Carlsen plays queen here to b6. Uh, bishop here to d6, pushing forward with e5. I do like pushing forward with your central pawn. So anytime you can get your, your pawns e5, d5, or even pushing a little bit further, it really starts to, to choke your opponent. Black really hasn't made much movement with his pawns past this sixth rank. So eventually he can start to choke his opponent and really wear down on all the different options. Um, this is a very good move to kind of push the spatial advantage that Magnus Carlsen has. We do see the knight take uh, and then the queen come back here. Interesting to note that Magnus Carlsen did get Give his opponent the double bishop pair. Um, although it is very difficult somewhat for, for Black to utilize that. He doesn't have his light square bishop even remotely into the game. He does need to get some, some king side safety. The bishop is going to come back here to e7. It was being attacked. We see the castling on the, the queen side. So again, from both sides, Black really wants to castle on the king side. He wants to get his light square bishop involved into the action because it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. He wants to bring his rook over here to c8 semi-open file. You always want your rooks very, very active. The more squares that they can move, the better they are they are going to be. From White's perspective, he knows that Black's going to castle on the king side, so he wants to just push everything in the kitchen sink at this king side. Start pushing his pawns, start bringing his rook over, it doesn't really matter. Uh, start throwing his queen over here, uh, centralize this knight, bring it over to the king side. It's not doing too much on c3 right here. So those are that's kind of what both sides are going to be looking to do in this chess game. 
Now, it's always interesting when you do chess commentary. Uh, sometimes the opponents don't do, and you kind of have to try to figure out what they're doing. Or sometimes it's just a huge blunder, and it's very obvious. Uh, sometimes they do exactly what you feel like they should do. Uh, sometimes that makes you feel smart. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. So in this particular case, uh, we see black play pawn here to b5, pushing forward on the queen side. Recognize that his opponent's already committed to the queen side with his queen side castle. Does also open up the door for his bishop to come here to b7. Does need to... Get that involved into the action again. Bishop pair doesn't do too much if you don't have both bishops actually involved into the game. Knight here to e4, swinging it over to the king side again on the queen side. It's kind of just sitting there as a defense mode. And Magnus Carlsen, the way he's played so far, he's not looking to play defense mode. Because if you're playing Vladimir Potkin, Russian grandmaster that's pretty good at chess, but Magnus Carlsen, the number one chess player in the world, he needs to come out of this with a win. He's not playing for a draw, and he's definitely not playing for second place. Black's going to castle on the king side. Uh, bishop here to d3. Bishop here to b7. Knight here to f6. Pretty interesting. Uh, doesn't really matter how Black attacks this. He could attack with his bishop. He could attack with his pawn, and that would actually be okay for Magnus Carlsen. The compensation that he would get uh, by opening up this G file um, you know, in this particular game, he, he feels like it would be worth it. Uh, Vladimir decides to go ahead and take with his bishop. The pawn recaptures. Interesting move in the particular game. He plays pawn to g6. And this is interesting because this pawn on g, on f6 is very, very dangerous. It has some really dangerous outposts. Uh, the queen can come up here to h6 and then a quick checkmate here. Um, he could have easily taken with his pawn here on f6. It's not quite clear how Magnus Carlsen could actually continue to attack this queen here to g3, king over here to h8. He could always now bring his rooks over here to, to kind of counterattack on the king side. No longer is it a strong attack for whites, but now have a counterattack for black. So, you know, he could have easily taken this pawn to material and not had to worry about these outposts, but instead he plays pawn here to g6. Definitely a questionable move in the particular game. Pawn to f5, kind of breaking this up. There's no reason to have doubled pawns. Go ahead and attack your opponent. Maybe you can have another weakness come up on the board. The queen coming back here to uh, d8, somewhat interesting. Queen to g5, I feel like this is kind of a mistake by Magnus Carlsen. He could have easily played rook over here to uh, f1. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. It doesn't really matter. You know, let's say... We have queen take here on f6, and then uh, this pawn takes here on g6, potentially. We have queen coming back here to g7, take, and then the king over here. Again, this pawn's being protected by this bishop here on d3. This is going to be very good for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, and, you know, instead, he decides to play a little bit different, plays queen here to g5. Pretty aggressive, although I think he could have found something better if he had a little bit more time. Uh, rook over here to c8. Uh, yes, I do like this move because it's a semi-open square. You need to get this rook involved, but you only want to play this if it's safe to play. And I don't think he realizes that the number one player in the world is completely breathing down his neck on the king side, and he really needs to focus over there because uh, he's in a lot of hurt. So Magnus Carlsen is just going to start gobbling up material. Pawn takes there on g6. Uh, the pawn recaptures, and then bishop here to g6. All of a sudden, he it's getting pretty uncomfortable for black right now as far as what he's going to do. Uh, he plays queen here to f6. I don't really like that move. I'm not really sure where else he's supposed to go. I, I guess he could take with his pawn here on g6, and then pawn to, you know, or the queen takes there on g6. It's still kind of messy. Um not to be confused with the Argentinian soccer player that scored earlier today. Uh, but from here, we see the queen take on f6, uh, and then a bishop take on f h7. The king come over here to h8, and then queen to h5, putting a lot of pressure. There is a discovered attack uh, once this bishop moves. We have king here to a g7. Rook up here to d7, a double attack here, attacking both the king and the bishop right here. There's not, again, white has just too many attackers in this particular game. He now plays rook here to f7, uh, but now bishop coming back here. It's going to be a mistake to go ahead and take with his, you know, rook because after, you know, queen come back here to f4 right away, 
uh, forcing the king to move. But then we actually see the rook take. But again, that just loses uh, the queen here to h7. And then the rook's going to fall. And all of a sudden, if you kind of look at the board, white's attacking the bishop here on b7. It's attacking uh, the rook. There's no way to kind of defend both of those on board. He can also play rook here to f1. Uh, if black's not careful, he can't defend everything. White's already up. White material on board with two pawns. He has two pass pawns over here. So in this particular case, Black just decided to go ahead and resign. Great game by Magnus Carlsen and really applying a lot of pressure to his opponent. Uh, one little small error by his opponents and all of a sudden Magnus Carlsen uh, went on to, to dominate the game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Always fun to watch Rapid Chess because they're playing at such a high level with not a lot of time on the clock. So hopefully you guys are enjoying watching the games, uh, maybe even learning something along the way, uh, watching some of the best chess players around the world play fast chess. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you also check out the chesswebsite.com for more coverage of both the Rapid and the Bliss Championship.